What's up everybody? My name is Brian Deach and today we're going to be talking about privileged remote access on the Zscar platform. With me, I have brought Michael Wheeler. Michael, why don't you introduce yourself, my friend? Yeah, hey everybody, my name is Michael Wheeler. So my role here at Zscaler is field CTO for OT and IoT security. So basically anything that has to do with securing OT or IT networks is, is kind of my area of expertise. Right on, brother. So I guess let's set the stage. You're going to be the uh, the Zscaler administrator for a, fict uh, a fictitious company that's out there. I'm going to be a contractor, a third party person that's come in with the BYOD device. Does that sound like a, a pretty good idea to you? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll use our fictional company here, Wheeler Enterprises. And okay. Wheeler Enterprises has contracted you, uh, Brian Deach, to help us out a little bit with uh, programming one of these PLCs. Right on. And I'm a very difficult guy. I don't like to install agents on my computer. So hopefully you guys have a solution for me today uh, to be able to do my job. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I can get you in completely clientlessly and you really don't even need to create an account on my system or anything like that. Um, actually, the first thing I just need from you is is what is your email address? So it's the uh, the Zero Trust Mr. Clean, so ZTMC at uh, Mailinator.com. All right, zero trust, Mr. Clean. Uh, Mr. Clean, I am going to give you access to my vendor remote access segment, and I'm going to put a time limit on it. So let's say between now and the end of the business day. Um, now, I optionally could enable working hours. So let's say I needed you for three weeks, but uh, I only wanted you during working during the hours of eight to five, Monday through Friday or something like that. You know, okay. I know people come home from the pub at 2 a.m. with insane ideas about how to program ladder logic. But, you know, I don't like that in my environment. So um, I, I have that control available to me, but we're just going to do between now and the end of today. Wonderful. So when I create that, it says, hey, do you want to create a user? And I say yes. Um, so I am going to say you are Brian Deach. And when I click OK and click Save, you are now enabled to access my system. So all you should have to do is navigate to the portal. And when it asks you for your email address, just put in your email address. And what it's going to do under the covers is realize that you are a contractor user and it's going to email you a one-time passcode just to be able to get into the system for that time. Well, that's cool. I thought I was going to have to like, somehow check a password out or something like that. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and sign in. I'm doing the uh, pra.mwheeler.net. And it says, send me an email. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, it says, check my email. Holy cow. All right, it's already here. So let's check the verification code. Well, it's kind of cool. I can either click sign in on my email or I can type in the code. I'm going to go ahead and just type it in for, for giggles. And I assume that this code is like one-time use? Yes, one-time use. Okay. All right, boom. I am in, but I'm a little freaked out because I don't have a username and password so far. So how am I going to log into this like Windows workstation uh, without a username and password? Can you send that to me via email as well? Because I'm sure that's very secure. Uh, so actually what we've done here is we've leveraged the Zscaler credential vault. So those credentials are stored securely in the Zscaler vault. And when you click on one of those sessions, I have created a policy that says when you are accessing that resource, uh, these credentials should be used. So I can roll them on a schedule, you know, I can change them every day or whatever. And then I just uh, sync those to the, the credential vault. And then whenever you go to log in, you don't have to know what the password is. You just click on the server and go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Windows Workstation. All right, I'm seeing a desktop. And hey, boom, look, I can already see everything. That's pretty wild. And uh, yeah, looks like I can move my mouse around and see if I can open up a file that works. One of the things I need to do is upload a document to you. So it looks like in this browser, I have the ability to select a file and it's going to throw it into the download folder all right not a problem mm -hmm. so i'm going to take a file from my system i'm going to call it contractor fun and i'm going to go ahead and upload this file hey michael is uploading this file and it says uh when i was inspecting it, it got blocked what's going on right there 
Oh, so we do have sandbox inspection enabled for all of our uploads from our contractors. So what that does is kind of just make sure that you're not accidentally or maybe on purpose uploading some malware into our environment. So if, for whatever reason, it seems that file is blocked by our uh, sandbox and we can go in and look and see why here in a little bit. No need to inspect that file. Let me go ahead and grab it correct file to upload. Looks like the file was uploaded successfully. Where did that file actually go, Michael? Um, so it's actually mapped as a drive to the workstation that you're on. So if you open Windows Explorer mm -hmm. and on the bottom left side of the Explorer window, you should see a folder called Z on Zscaler. And if you click on that, your file should actually be in there already. Boom, there it is, that's pretty simple. Uh, you know what, I'll go ahead and uh, leave this file here, come back later on and uh, do the update, but at least I have the documentation here to do my job. Uh, what do I need to do on my end? I need to like sign out or click on anything to get out of here. And by the way, what is this thing that says recording? That's kind of freaking me out. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we are recording all sessions from our external contractors just for quality assurance, compliance, um, and also just for your safety and for ours. You know, you don't want to get blamed for something you didn't do. And so we have a recording of that um, and we know when to blame you if you need blamed. Um, so that's oh, the recording. Wow. The recordings are stored in the Zscaler cloud, uh, encrypted at rest for a year. So at any time, an administrator can go view that recording back or um, or play it back um, or download it for long term storage. So uh, those are all stored in the Zscaler cloud. Now, as far as disconnecting or logging out, there's a few different ways you can do it. So in the upper right hand corner, you've got the disconnect button. Um, you can do the normal Windows RDP thing where you click start and then log out. Um, but actually, since you're done with your work, what I'm going to go ahead and do is revoke your approval. Okay. And what this is going to do is forcefully terminate your session. So I'm going to click the button to remove your approval. And here within a second, you should go ahead and get disconnected. Yeah, immediately disconnected. It can't log in. So let me close that. Uh, for, for Grin, oh, look at that now. The, the page that had like all of the icons, just everything disappeared. What's going on there? Yeah, so it's all tied to your approval. So when that approval went away, all of your access went away as well. Wow, even if I refresh it, there's nothing there. Well, that's pretty cool. So uh, for the, the people watching, let's uh, end this little role play. How about you show from an administrative view, like what we could have seen uh, from a Zscar perspective. Obviously, this, this person doing uh, the update had taken something probably malicious and tried to put it on that system, but it was blocked. Uh, so let's dig into that a little bit deeper. Yeah, absolutely. So from the analytics menu in diagnostics, we can go view that connection. And so we take a ton of information about every session that goes on. So we capture everything from start and end time to uh, how the connection ended. Now this one's showing up as a red since I forcefully terminated it. Um, the duration of the session, how much traffic you transferred, um, even you know what policy allowed you in. Sometimes that's a question like, hey, how'd this guy get in? Um, so we also log who you logged into the Zscaler cloud as and where you popped into the Zscaler cloud, where you popped out of the Zscaler cloud, and then what the resource was that you were actually accessing on the end. Um, so one of the other things that we do log is that even though you did not log into that RDP session, we injected a set of stored credentials. And so we log- I can't see that. <clears throat> Keep going just a little bit more. Perfect, thank you. So, all right, the credential username says M. Willer, got it. Yes, so that was actually the set of stored credentials that I logged you in as. Now, the other interesting thing here is this little eyeball with files. Um, so if I click view here, I can see that you uploaded a PDF and it was um, successful. Now, if I go back to one of your other sessions where you uploaded some additional files, um, I can also see this one. And so this one is pretty interesting. Oh. So this is your uh, update.dll and the Zscaler Sandbox analyzed it and said, whoa, 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 this is some kind of malware, Win32 worm, blah, blah, blah. And so the Zscaler Sandbox blocked that upload. So we were able to stop that file before it made it into our sensitive environment. And then 
you know, implemented some sort of unwanted uh, disk encryption, you know, in the form of ransomware, something like that. Wow, that's phenomenal. So it's good to see you're doing inspection on private traffic as well. Yes, exactly. And then one of the other things that I have is a recording of everything that you did. So I can go to play this recording. Okay, so right now we are looking at the recording. So I see everything from the time that you logged in, um, you may be moving the mouse around a little bit, clicking on some icons, um, but we can also fast forward through this. So here's where you found your update.dll file. Um, and it looks like you opened it. And so we can see the content of the DLL, or I'm sorry, the update file and um, everything that you're doing during the session. Yeah, it looks so, like the DLL didn't actually get uploaded. Uh, yeah, don't don't look at that, oh, whoa. what I'm doing. In yeah, what line. are you doing here? <laughs> uh, uh oh, what are you? Oh yeah, you might be poking around a little bit. Okay, so uh, right. the record caught that. So we're gonna maybe have a little discussion about that, see what was going on there. But overall, you know, we were able to get you in with no standing credentials. You were able to upload only secure files. Uh, we logged you in with uh, stored credentials from the Credential Vault. We recorded everything you did, and now we're watching the playback. You know, I must say that this is like pretty streamlined from a BYOD perspective. The only thing I need is a, I guess, a credit score and a heartbeat to be able to access this. I just open up a browser. Uh, I type in pretty much whatever identity I want to bring in. It looks like through Okta or s through some IDP, you're able to authenticate me with a one-time password. And it's really neat that I can access, you know, SSH and RDP sessions right from a browser window. So I appreciate your time today, Michael. Any last thoughts before we drop? No, I, do, I think the web uh, part is very important just because, you know, you as the contractor probably have 15 other customers and you don't want to install 15 different agents just to be able to access my environment and everybody else's. So we're seeing a lot of movement in the, the marketplace for clientless based solutions. Also need to still solve for secure file uploads and, and time bound access and things like that. So these are all features that are available in the Zscaler Privilege uh, remote access solution. So we look forward to having conversations with you in the future. Yeah. Reach out to us, like, uh, subscribe, share the video. I have no idea, but we appreciate your time today. Thanks for watching. You can find us on LinkedIn. Uh, reach out in any way, shape, or form. I'll be happy to talk with y'all. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.